I've seen thousands of credit reports and the highest scores have a couple things in common that you might want to know about. So hey guys, I'm Christian and I've been in the mortgage industry since 2001. In this video, we're going to go over those things that the highest scores have in common so that you can know what you need to do if you want to have a high score just like that. So such as, you know, how many accounts do they have open? How many inquiries are there? What are the balances on the credit cards? That's an important one there. So we're going to go over all of that in this video right now. Now your credit score is one of the most important things for your financial life and it kind of dictates the cost of pretty much everything from buying a car to buying a home to having a credit card, all of that stuff. So it's important for you to know what it takes to actually have a good score. And the best way to do that is by looking at other good scores and just seeing what they have in common. So that's why we're gonna go over that in this video. All right, so let's start with the credit cards. How many do they have open? So for these, the most common was to have at least two credit cards, but no more than four. And those accounts were open for about five years or more, right? So I've seen some credit reports that have 10 credit cards. And so you wanna be careful there because when you start opening too many of them, you have access to a lot of credit, right? And the credit bureau can say, hey, I don't know, we don't know what's going on with this. What's gonna happen in the future with this credit? Cause we've got all these brand new accounts open, right? So when you have 10 brand new accounts, for example, and they're all within the last two months, you'll see a score that just drops. I've actually seen somebody with a credit score in the mid 500s and they never had a late payment in their life, but they had 10 new credit cards that were open in the last three months and that kind of screwed everything up. And they didn't quite have a lot of a huge balance on them yet, but with those 10 new credit cards and being so new, it can dramatically change your credit profile depending on what happens and so the credit bureaus you know, the score is a little bit lower or quite a bit lower in that case uh, from that. So anyways, these credit reports had at least two credit cards, but no more than four and they were open at least five years. Revolving credit is a big part of your credit score, right? It shows a lot about your overall credit, right? So think about it this way. If you have money available on the credit card and you're not using it, you're a really good credit risk, right? When somebody starts to have trouble, the first thing that happens is the credit card balances increase, right? So if you've got two or three credit cards and the balances go from zero or 10% and they go all the way up to 100% and then that next interest is due and it tips it over 100%, you've got some problems, right? The score goes down, that's a sign that there is some financial issues that are going on, right? That's why the credit score drops, right? That's typically the first sign of somebody going into financial trouble. So we wanna make sure to keep money available on there so then we don't have any issues like that, right? It's pretty good to have a high credit score with no revolving credit because of how big of a portion that that, that is, how much of it is. Now for the accounts that we looked at, or the credit reports that I've looked at, the balances were pretty much at or near zero. They were really low, at least 10% or lower as far as the utilization goes. Utilization is the percentage of the amount that you're using on the credit card compared to the balance. So if you have a $1,000 limit and you have a $100 balance, that's a 10% utilization on there. Now the important thing for you to know is that the credit score is really based on the percentage of it that you're, that you're using, not the dollar amount, okay? So if you had a $100 credit card and you have a $100 balance, you may be thinking, hey, that's only 100 bucks, it shouldn't affect my credit score that much. But if we look at the credit utilization, it's 100%, right? So if you have three credit cards and they're all a $100 limit and they're all a $100 balance, your score is gonna die because the credit bureaus think something's going on because it's looking at that percentage. Now, if those same $100 balances were on credit cards that had a limit of $1,000 each, you're gonna have a really good credit score because of that rather than, rather than the opposite. So it doesn't go off based on the dollar amount, it goes off of the percentage, right? And credit utilization accounts for 30% of the credit score, so it's a pretty big chunk. And if you have multiple credit cards, it's important to know to keep them all low, right? So if you have one credit card that's maxed out and the other credit card is at a zero balance, that credit card that's maxed out is gonna make a, have a big impact on your credit score because it's not sure what's going on. So if we take half of that balance and we move it to the other credit card and we make it so both credit cards have a 50% utilization rate, you're gonna have a higher credit score than if all of that money is on one card. We see this happen sometimes when people wanna consolidate several credit cards, right? So they'll have three or four credit cards, they'll open one to consolidate them all. So they take the balance of all three or four of them, they put it on this one, and then this one has the balance. And the idea behind that is that it's going to save money. And it, and it could from an interest standpoint, depending on what the interest rate is on this one compared to the others, but it can cost the credit score because now we have this credit card that is maxed out, it's a new credit card and it's maxed out. And the credit bureau is like, what the heck just happened? Now we've got these other, all these credit cards, we have access to this credit card and this brand new one's already maxed out. There might be something going on. 
and so the score starts to dive, right? So we wanna be careful of that, make sure that if we have multiple cards, we can distribute the balances so that they're even and that'll make the credit score better. Now let's talk about inquiries. For the most part, almost all of these accounts had two inquiries or less, right? So they're not a ton of inquiries. Now, inquiries can have an effect on the credit score, but it depends on the purpose, like what you're pulling them for. And let me, let me explain here. So you have different inquiries if you're doing a mortgage, if you're doing a, an auto loan, or if you're doing a credit card, and they will affect the score a little bit differently. On credit cards, for example, if you have, and I'm gonna exaggerate here a little bit, but let's say you have 10 credit card inquiries, right? You have the potential to open 10 new credit cards at that moment, which could dramatically change your credit profile. So the credit bureaus look at that and say, hey, we don't know what's going on, but there are 10 brand new accounts here. The score is gonna dip a little bit with those inquiries, right? Now, and kind of the same for auto loans. Mortgages are a little bit different, right? Mortgages, you can't open more than one mortgage at the same, at the same time. There's too many checks and balances, right? We do a lot of work on our end to verify that you qualify with credit, income, assets, you know, looking at all of that property, right? So we're doing a lot of things there to make sure that you actually qualify and so you can only open up one mortgage at a time. Now, on the other end, the credit bureaus don't want to penalize you for having mortgage inquiries because they want you to have the ability to shop around. So mortgage inquiries aren't going to affect your score as much as credit cards and auto loans. Um, I did another video comparing uh, hard inquiries to soft inquiries and kind of the effect on the mortgage. I'll put that in the description and that'll give you kind of an idea of what the different inquiries are and how they affect the, the score for a mortgage, right? Most of those credit reports, two or less inquiries, very few as far as the inquiries go. All right, now let's talk about length of time that credit was established. For the vast majority of these, it was over 10 years. So, and that makes sense. Length of credit accounts for 15% of the credit score. So it's a, it's a pretty big chunk, right? As you pay bills over time and you create that track record for paying bills, it's gonna help as far as the credit score goes. Now, for those starting out, that doesn't mean that you can't have a good credit score in the beginning. You actually can, it's just not gonna be at 800, right? So if you've just established credit in six months, you're, you're not gonna have a credit, a, a credit score of 800, right? It's gonna take some time. But you can have 700, right? And in fact, the average credit score in the country right now is 714, and you can get to that within probably a few months if you open up some credit cards, your balances are really low. So even if you're, you're new, you're, you're young, I think I started mine around 17, um, but you're just starting out, you can have a relatively good credit score right out of the chute as long as you keep those balances low. So if you open up a couple credit cards, not 10, right, two, and you open those up and you keep those balances really low, then you can get a pretty good credit score. It's just gonna take a little time to get to that 800 that a lot of people are trying to get to. Now let's talk about payment history. So for the vast majority of these credit reports, the payment history was perfect, right? Now there were some that had a, a blemish here and there and just like a, a random late payment, right? And it could have been on a credit card, auto loan, something like that. But here's the thing that you need to know about late, um, a late that shows up on your credit. It's gonna depend upon the time from when that late hit. So if you have a late payment and it hit today, like today that payment was late and it's reporting on your credit score, your credit score is gonna just dive because the credit bureau thinks something's going on right now that's affecting this and we don't know if everything else is gonna start going late, right? So you're really high credit risk at that point in time, right? But let's say that late happened, now it's three or four years down the road, everything since then has been great, we've got credit cards that balances are low, so we've got this really good track record that we've created and we have one blemish three or four years ago. It's not gonna affect your score all that much. So as time goes on, those late payments affect your score less and, and less. And then they'll drop off after seven years, but the effect of them is really lessened after about three or four, right? Now, if you have multiple lates, um, it's gonna take a little bit longer, right? So, but it, your score will still rebound pretty good, but it's gonna take a little bit longer to get higher. You know, you can have, you can hit that 800 with a late payment, um, you know, five years ago or so, but if you have like six or seven, it's gonna be a little bit different there. Now, one thing that's important to know is on these late payments, and this kind of goes for collections as well, it is possible to negotiate for them to be removed, right? You can negotiate with the creditor. A lot of people don't know this, but it's important to know because it can make a big difference on your credit score, especially if you had a late and it was just, just new, just recent, and it's the only blemish that you have, right? I've had this happen as well. So I went on a trip, forgot to make a mortgage payment, right? I thought it was on auto pay. I know a lot of people, you know, I hear that a lot from, from people and it's common, it happens. But anyways, I thought it was on auto pay, came back, got phone calls, hey, you didn't make your mortgage payment. Yes, I did, it's on auto pay. What are you talking about? 
Come to find out, it actually wasn't on there. I looked, checked the account, it didn't get drafted. I'm like, shoot, what happened here? So anyways, they reported it late. Um, I negotiated it with that bank. I sent them a copy of the bank statement. Look, I had the money available in order to make the payment. Here's what happened. I was out for whatever reason. The auto pay was done. I don't remember why. It's been 10 years or so. Um, but anyways, after I was able to go you know, back and forth with them a little bit and show them proof that I did actually have the funds available, they went ahead and removed that late for me. And that was a mortgage late, right? It is possible to remove those depending on the reason and just work with your creditor to see if you can, if you can make that happen, right? If to get that done, you gotta be pretty adamant. Like you, it's unfortunate, but you can't be kind about it. You can't be nice to them. You have to get on their case a little bit to try to get something removed if you're gonna get it corrected. So speaking of getting things removed, let's talk about collection because this is something that can also be removed. It can have a dramatic effect on your credit score if you're successful in getting it removed. You have to remember that collections want money. That's that's their sole existence is for them to, that, comp that collection company to collect money for the debt. And they're willing to do almost anything to get it, to get that money in there. You can use that to your advantage. So if you're negotiating, hey, I will pay you, but only if you remove it, right? Now, sometimes it can be a little tricky. Again, you gotta be really adamant. Can't be kind about it. You gotta get on their case a little bit. But I've seen it happen time and time again where you get collections removed. All right, so it is possible and it is worth it if you do it. You've got to make sure to get to talk to the right person. A lot of times these collection companies are big giant call centers. And so if you call just the first person in line, a lot of times they don't have the power to do anything. But if you get transferred up a little bit um, and you get to a manager, you know, sometimes they'll do whatever just to get you off the phone, right? If they get paid and they get you off the phone, it's a success for them. Um, so it can, it can be a bit challenging, but it's worth it. And I would highly recommend that you do that if you're working on negotiating a collection. All right, so let's talk about installment loans. Now, nearly every one of these higher scores had a mortgage on their credit report. And a mortgage can then have a good impact on the credit score because typically people have mortgages longer uh, than they do auto loans or any other type of loans. And if you've got a track record of making that higher payment, over time, it's gonna to lead to a better credit score. We've seen people who've had a decent credit score, let's say they were 650 um, just from credit cards and stuff, and then when they got the mortgage, at six months of mortgage payment, um, that credit score went from a 650 to a 700. Now there's a lot of factors in there that are involved, right? So it's hard to say, it, you know, it's hard to guarantee that that's going to happen for you. It is, it is possible having a mortgage on time for six months can make a big difference in the credit score. All right guys, well there you have it. I hope this was helpful for you to get an idea of what those high credit scores had in common. If you like this, please be sure to like and subscribe so that uh, YouTube will show this to others. We appreciate you. We'll catch you on the next one.